Thanks for staying with us now. Diversity, equity, and inclusion in governance is the practice of ensuring that all members of society have an equal opportunity to participate in decision making and to benefit from the fruits of government. It is about creating a government that is reflective of the diversity of its population, that is responsive to the needs of all its citizens. Now, in a statement by um, PCAN, Executive Director Al Haji Abdul Karim Yubad, Yubeda, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Secretary, and the Secretary Mohammed Rabiu Awal, um, some APC members under the banner of the Progressive Change Ambassadors of um, Nigeria, that's the PCAN, have said that the President's appointment are lopsided and do not reflect the diversity of the country. So today we're asking, what influence does diversity have on governance and nation building? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So I want to bring in Bola, <laughs> Bola Hon in a minute. I just want to hear your thoughts quickly. What do you think? Okay, so I Is think it, does that... Does it really uh, matter? It really does. Okay. I mean, it's not a moral imp imperative. It is a strategic um, approach, you know, to ensuring that um, we have a more resilient um, nation building process. You cannot have a country as diverse as Nigeria. I mean, um, we all come from different places, different languages and all that are not have um, some set of people who are not adequately represented to feel like they are part of that system. Mm. So for us to, you know, rise above all the cultural challenges, ethnic biases, and even gender biases, we must look to ensure that um, we promote, you know, um, the strength, you know, in diversity, equity, and really ensure that we include everybody in governance. Mm. You know, when people are always talking about, uh, what's it called, especially presidency and, uh, mm. uh, and vice president, people are always talking Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa. Mm. Also, we come from Edo State and call, what do you want to do? Well, like literally. So, I mean, I hear you. <laughs> and that was why when President Jonathan mm. was elected, it was like, okay, finally, I can see myself, you know, represented. represented. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to tell you people, or oh, your bad people, is it like Igbo, your bad house? There's more tribe in Nigeria than that. So, mm -hmm. if you truly, where I am waiting now, mm -hmm. I want to put you inside mm -hmm. the tribe. If you truly mm -hmm. want to practice diversity, mm -hmm. me, if you ask me, I will say, okay, well, all this, because there's some laws, there's some quotas, I mean, there's some, what's it called? Some, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, parameters mm -hmm. that you must meet for you to be able to be elected, especially, let's even leave it at that senior office you mm -hmm. know president and vice president mm -hmm. if you pick somebody from where should i say now maybe out here or maybe mm -hmm. or maybe um uh, ben wasted person might not be able to wield that much influence so if you say okay you know what you want to really practice diversity then you must bring down some of these rules and regulations and just say this year anyhow in a one dua three president uh, three presidential candidates must come from sokoto we could not say now, oh, Sokoto, all oh, leads to Sokoto. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Because that's the only way I see it working. No, because it, 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 because it means that they, they rotate it. Mm -hmm. Just if we were picked from Lagos State next year, we will pick from, you know, we we'll just go around all the state, mm -hmm. 30, 36 <laughs> plus federal capital territory. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just Before, before like, he gets it, you're 36. But yeah, so before they reach, uh, this is, they say, your quota don't exist. <laughs> no, you say we should practice uh, diversity. Let us move like that. Because now I want to see an Edo man be president. No, but that's very possible. Uh -huh. No, it's not possible the way it is now. I'm telling you. <laughs> Let me bring it out, I guess. Bella Alonjati <laughs> is a consummate finance professional who has spent the best part of the last 30 years in corporate Nigeria. He's Industry exposure cuts across professional services, investment banking and advisory services, corporate banking, print media, education, healthcare, oil and gas, and telecoms. He is very passionate about issues around leadership and governance, and that's why we are so excited to have him with us in studio. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. It's now nice you to see, you're laughing. <laughs> yes. But I'm just telling you people <laughs> if you say you want to do diversity, me, I want to see an Edu man as a president. My, I'm sure my, what's it called? My, my village people will be happy with what I've said. Mm. But let me hear your thoughts, really. Is it possible to truly practice diversity, equity, and inclusion in Nigeria with the current structure that the, the nation has? We're, we're going to have to be deliberate Thank you. about it. 
is a fairly complex space. Mm. Uh, but, you know, this DEI is an emerging space. Yeah. It's not just government. It's also about the corporate environment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's applicable to literally every part of our life. But I think corporate today. are doing well. Um, some are. Uh, Semblance of doing well. I've, I Can went be to a bank branch on our lower road a couple of years ago. And they were speaking a language from a part of the country to me. And I was wondering why. How did you assume that I speak that language? Is that the language you're supposed to communicate with in the bank? Mm. That was a bank in a highbrow Lagos. Mm. And it is still behaving as if it's in a village where you can narrow down the language that almost 90% of the people speak. Mm. And it's, so it's still there, even in corporate Nigeria. Mm. That's the reality. It gets more complex when you go to government. Yeah. So a cross river... That's about 60 distinct tribes. <laughs> Tell me about it. A Where do we go around? Kaduna, about 50. Mm -hmm. These people speak different languages. They are different people in evolution, you know, how mm -hmm. they got to that place. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you get things to go around them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is where the problem is. So a better way to solve most of that problem is that whoever finds himself in power, you just be good. Sir. You see, when people get the things they need in life, they don't, they don't get yeah, so yeah, much yeah, who true, provides it. True, true. You oh, know, you. That, that is a way to solve the problem largely, mm. not, not the way we're because, going so, Sorry to, to come in, uh, dear. I'll let you come in. Because you know why I said that? Because really, that's why I said in the beginning, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Because in the end, if you really want to say diversity, in the true sense of diversity in this country, mm. we, will not go, we will not be able to go around. In, I don't think even in a thousand centuries. We, we won't be able, be able to. If you, if, you have, you are, if you are done with the hill, you are done with maybe each 36 states, you now say, okay, oh, female. Inside that 36 states, you say, okay, last, this one was from Auchi. Me and Benin. Mm. Somebody else is from uh, Okwila. Mm. You, so it, 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 is, it is really difficult. Mm. But you see, when there is good governance, nobody cares. Nobody cares. So even when these people are coming out, I just feel like this is a distraction. When they pick and they are coming out to say that the governor, the, the president is p selecting people from a certain, um, um, what's it called, tribe. As far as I'm concerned, are those people competent to do the job? If they are competent to do the job, please go ahead, do the job. And let me feel your impact that you are doing the job and it is benefiting every single citizen in Nigeria. That's what works for me. Because truly, if we start to play this diversity, equity, and inclusion card... Where do you draw be, the line? It's going to be very difficult. It is mm. difficult. The real thing is serve. Serve purposely. Deliver to the people. Let them have a feel that there is government. And they won't remember where you came from. Mm. That is the reality. Mm. But for as long, as a matter of fact, what, what makes people start, you know, you know, moving towards ethnicity or religion is because they don't feel secure. Thank they you. feel betrayed by other person. I can't trust him. I would rather trust someone who came from myself. Mm. In the real sense, by the time Jonathan's administration was over, it's okay. A village of probably less than 30,000. Like was known still had no water to drink. Uh, so <laughs> it's not a matter of my person is this. There was oh, literally no road to water farm by the time Obasanjo was done with Absolutely, his... Absolutely, uh, with his presidency. It, with his pres presidency. And Okun State is still one of the states that has the worst roads ever. One of the most unstable states in Nigeria within security matter was Katsina. Mm -hmm. They have had two presidents come from that place. President Yerida was from Katsina, then you have President Buhari, and it was still one of the poorest and one of the most uh, uh, insecure states in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what is the exact benefit that comes to the table by virtue of the fact that it is my person mm -hmm. that is there? Mm -hmm. So we need to look for people who can get the job done and do it well. And let us receive the dividends. A very good example. For the first 36 years of America's presidency, 32 out of that 36, all the president came from one state. Okay. Oh. Massachusetts. <laughs> and it wasn't part of the discussion. It wasn't, it wasn't the big deal. They didn't mind that. 32 years out of 36, one state out of the entire United States. Mm -hmm. But as long as those people are able to deliver, give them what they want, move the nation forward, 
it wasn't the big discussion in American politics as I think. Mm. Okay. But, so uh, it's a more I diverse hear, one. Yeah. Though. I hear you. I I mean I hear you. <laughs> but I mean, honestly for me, I, I think I am more I really don't care where anyone comes from, as long as you can do the work, as long as you can deliver. That's where I stand and it's reflected in how I work, how I interact with people. However, there is a reality. And it's the, the, the real, I mean, we saw this on social media. Mm. We're young people. Young people who have inherited this ideology of where I come from, this religion and all. So again, I want to ask, how do we bring people together to say, you know what, let's do away with whatever it is that you think makes you different. Let's look at let's look at the common goal, which is you know what? Let's just look at people who can serve, because I mean, the last election I had, so, in fact, I lost friends because of it. Because yeah. my argument was it really doesn't matter. Let's just whoever can move this country forward should just be there. But it became a uh, oh, I mean, forgive my Yoruba. Oh, Nero. Oh my God. You understand? That's and a very strong word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have you don't have sense. No. No. It goes beyond have, sense. It goes uh, beyond sense. You don't uh, have history. Mm. More like, you, yeah. where do you come from? Where do you come from? What's your identity? It, it's very you heated. Your ancestry. Yeah. Um, it's very heated, yeah. and you can't even begin to imagine how this has deeply eroded our thinking. Mm. Really. So you would even find that for the very few people. Who had this ideology of you know what well, let's just move let's focus on progress there are more who are about i need to be represented i need to be and their voices mm. are louder than people who think like you and i so how do we so how do we move forward like i started with we have to be more deliberate about this mm. see I don't believe that there is a part of Nigeria that you cannot find competent people. I agree. True. If you look well enough. So when people are looking for those who can serve, you can, it's not an either or situation. Mm. You can also find people who can serve in that tribe that is not yours, in that religion that is not yours. Absolutely. So let that judgment be more towards merit mm. first. And in the course of implementing merit, we are deliberate about inclusion. Mm. Mm. And if you look well enough, you will find good people in almost all the places. True. That is the reality of mm. our mm. situation. Mm. Um, Nigeria is so diverse, but the tyranny of the majority, you can see it everywhere, is the reason why we talk about three tribes. In Nigeria, I think there are only three. When some states have 60 uh, <laughs> tribes. It's the reason why we talk about Islam and Christianity. Mm -hmm. I see that encompasses everybody. Mm -hmm. So those other people that are not in those two classes, they're totally... They're not existing. They're not, they're, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the reality is that even some of those who say they're in the true primary... They are also... They are also in that <laughs> other one. <laughs> you are very correct. You know, so we, we, we ha if you look at, uh, there's a book called uh, Fighting Corruption is Difficult or mm. something like that. It's Dangerous mm. by Ngozi Okunjo Oh, I've not seen that. Oh, mm. yeah. He wrote, she wrote a book. And one of the topics she discussed was how during uh, Jonathan's regime, Jonathan was accused of nepotism. I hope you know. Mm -hmm. He was told that literally the entire finance suit of Nigeria was in the hand of a particular tribe. Mm. From the minister to the central bank governor to the head of NCSA to the budget and economy planning, everything was in, in the real sense. It looks like that when you go and check the names that were on that list. Mm. When the next person came, is it different? Exactly. It wasn't different. It wasn't. And now, even with his successor to the, to the one after Jonathan, mm. has it changed? No. Mm. It has not changed. So largely, that is who we are, naturally. So For us to change that, mm. we're going to have to be dead. So I was going to say that, I mean, hearing you speak, there is a place of loyalty and trust. Mm. Correct. In 
identifying people. So for instance, now, before, if I wanted to do something, I would just do it blindly, regardless of who is there. Mm. But with time, right, I'm watching and I'm seeing that, oh, there are some things that I do not trust this person to have the capacity to be able to handle it. But this other person, I trust that they would deliver on the job. So based on the fact that I've worked with these people, right, over time. Because it's not enough for you to just have a good CV on paper. Yes. Right? Um, most of these appointments and all of that are delicate positions. I remember the other lady that was appointed, um, Tolu, the head of, um, is it the, the communications one or something, that mm -hmm. they rejected her, that mm -hmm. they don't know her and all mm -hmm. of that. But if you check track record, I mean, she's worked on the... Um, a lot of people that the president has appointed, if you check, they've worked under him in some way or the other, other, you know. Yeah. So is it possible that he's just putting a structure that he believes has the capacity to be able to make his government look good, right? Can we put that excuse there or you're still insisting that the fair thing to do is go around and see that, yes, you can actually identify because they are actually competent people everywhere, like mm -hmm. you rightly said. So is it, so should we make that excuse for him that it is okay to be able to put people you trust so that they can deliver on the job? It's a mix of the two, and there's a place for both. Yeah. President George Bush, before he became president, he had a committee led by Condoleezza Rice. They were like a think tank group for him. Well, 20 of them or thereabout. Uh, they've been there for like a year before he became president. Everybody in that team became members of his administration mm -hmm. because he has learned to work with them, to trust them. In fact, they formulated his policies wow. for him. So by the time he became president, when he's looking for this, he knows remember this guy, mm. looking for this, that guy. In fact, the one that was rejected by the Congress, he forced it on them, he vetoed it. They had to, they had to appoint that guy. Mm. Because the guy had some funny, funny past, you know. <laughs> but he still ensured that the guy became mm. a member of the cabinet. So there's a place of loyalty. Trump was even worse mm -hmm. when it came to that. So he brought his, all his family members. All his family members <laughs> were all there. So there's a place for loyalty, for this is the person I know, this is the person I can entrust mm. this role to. Mm. There's a place for that. But as you go into that, because we have been deliberate. In fact, the tendency that you'll be carried away along that line, you won't even remember that there is something called inclusion and sure. equity and this. So if you, but if you're deliberate, so while you are going in that line, you will occasionally call yourself to question. You will be ready to make interviews rather than just choose one person and say, okay, there are three people, right? Let me talk to them. Mm. Mm. And in the course of engaging with people, you may find out that there's actually somebody who is better than the person that you knew. Mm. And who can still get the job done? People will think even loyalty is a, is a, is a, is a, is a moving space. Sure. Someone who was loyal yesterday might not be loyal today. Some of the people that pull leaders down are some of those they trust. Yeah. Mm. They get there, they have their own agenda, and they hijack, they hijack the place. Mm. When, when uh, the former wife of the president was saying, oh, they've hijacked my... Uh, my husband's presidency. True. He wasn't talking about external people. It was the people inside. It was the people inside. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, thanks for staying with us. And if you just tuned in, we're having a great and interesting conversation on DEI in governance and its influence on nation building. That's diversity, equity, and inclusion, in case you do not know the meaning of DEI. And we have with us our very own Bala Olojode. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So, well, now, so now there is a conspiracy theory out there. I'm not the one that said it. <laughs> you know, that another um, pa pattern that the current president has, right, when you've worked for him and, of course, you've been loyal to him and all of that, he always, you know, pays back. Like, you always compensate. And they feel like some of all of this appointments and all of that are just compensatory that is not really that these people are actually really you know yeah they might they might but it's more compensatory do you agree with that theory or you know have you seen certain appointment that you said hmm, no 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 this one is a square peg in a square hole of course there are some appointments that are square peg in a square hole mm -hmm. there are also appointments that has nothing to do with um you know, I'm paying you back because mm. the people involved were not even politicians in the mm. first instance. Mm -hmm. okay. But then, 
there are those that were compensations, and we know that. Um, what, what I think is important is that when you are talking about um, um, compensation, mm -hmm. there are certain roles that are too critical mm -hmm. for compensation. So when you want to fill those roles, you're not thinking compensation. You're mm. thinking, who is the best person? Who is the person? best person? Yeah. Uh, there are some other ones that you can play around with. Oh, you come and take this one. You do it for a while. That's fine. Mm. After all, in a couple of years, I can decide to remove everybody. And, mm. uh, <laughs> and replace them. And replace them. Mm -hmm. and everybody, I mean, if you have served for two years, you won't say, I didn't remember you. Yeah. So, it's, a, it's, a mix of, it's a mix of both. Compensation, and, and it's not just about Nigerian politics. Compensation is global. everywhere, it's mm -hmm. global. Yeah. Mm, it's but don't play with the critical roles in the name of compensation. That mm. is what is important. Mm. I agree, I agree. Mm. Okay, so I want to ask, I mean, given your um, experience in this, um, in nation building, are there current um, DEI initiatives in Nigeria, I mean, within the governance space, and then, if there are, what are the? Do we have any way to measure the impact, in, whether good, whether bad? And then, is there any way we can we can benchmark, you know, against mm. them, just for future purpose to say, oh, okay, you know what, we tried this, we did this, it didn't work. Let's look towards this, and then, you know, something. Yeah, like that. there are actually some elements of, you know, attempt to put the eye mm. in. Even in the constitution, you have a federal character. Mm -hmm. um, you have a situation in which each state is meant to donate to the center for ministers. Mm. Uh, so that's an attempt to include every Everybody. state. Mm. Which, which they've help, been keeping up with. Yeah. Which they've been keeping up with. Um, there's also a question whether we need to keep it. Because the, the constitution did not actually say you must bring from... 36 states. Mm. It didn't even say that you must have 36 ministers, mm. which means, how about I have 10 ministers, and then but after I a while, I change I them, recycle. bring from another 10. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a possibility. But those elements are there. Mm. Uh, but what you still see is that because we're still largely driven by this primordial sentiment, I would like to say it, uh, a lot of time we find ways where there is a lacuna to, you know, circumvent all those ones. So apart from fulfilling those ones that are written in black and white, all the other ones that are within the purview mm. of the president to choose whoever he likes, he will choose whoever he likes. And that is where we really need to challenge inclusion. Mm. As far as minister is concerned, they came from all the 36 states, including even Abuja. So uh, inclusion has been satisfied. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, so in addition to what you've just said now, challenging the where he has direct, you know, um, would I call it uh, prerogative. prerogative to just choose whoever? There are also the the quota for women. Yeah. Right. That they've said that okay, this is this now is a global call. It's not even just restricted to Nigeria. That at least there should be some representation of women in leadership, governance, and in all those top positions. Right. So, um, should we begin to say that because we just want to fulfill a quota? We put because some of us are really minister. Really, really <laughs> They've been talking about it lately. I see first. Hi, the one that was challenging you, I said, Auntie. <laughs> because, like, literally, yeah. like, that one is, I mean, I don't know what to say because, because we. <laughs> Do we sacrifice competence? Yeah. Or, because you know, because yeah. they've said that women have to be yeah. part of it. Like, yeah. literally, I've. Yeah, help me out. That that should also challenge our sense of selection, mm -hmm. uh, because there are that, there are actually enough women in the pool yeah. to pick from. We're not lacking women. Women are probably fifty percent of this entire population. Mm -hmm. So if if in our our choices we make the wrong ones, then it is our fault because there are real people out there. There has been a few issues around women in. Uh, politics. There are not many of the people that we would like to see yeah. who are able to make it into politics. I, I remember attending uh, an invitation from uh, a presidential aspirant to mm. Abuja. He wanted to speak with uh, leaders of thought, whatever he called us then. So we went there. He had also invited women. But the meeting was overnight. The meeting started at about 
30 or 9. You're lying. You go. Ah, you see what I'm saying? You look high. You look good. You you. I mean, these are the issues. So, at the end of the day, it was a long table of men. Mm, so, now we had a meeting. So, the participation of women is still fringe, largely. So, making a choice within that free, if you want to only look at compensation, becomes a problem because only those who are participating mm -hmm. are the people who are qualified for compensation. Mm -hmm. But if what you are looking for is credible people who can get things done and it's not about compensation, they are out there in millions of True. them. True. Yeah. True. 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 So, so based on the current economic situation in the country, mm -hmm. right, do you think this administration can offer Nigerians anything positive? <laughs> ah, it's a big question. Um, we're in a very, very challenging season as a country. And yeah. By the way, it is in order to say congratulations that we won a case mm. today, the PNID case. Mm. 11 billion US dollars. Otherwise, by now, we will have actually been bankrupt, literally. Mm. We'll be insolvent, unable to pay anything. So I heard yeah. that, I saw that thing. Can you please explain it? Because I saw it in passing. Okay. But because I don't understand it. I, you I, didn't pay attention I to it. I didn't pay attention to it. Can okay. you just explain that PNID? Okay. PNID is mm. this, uh, I, I, I'll call it briefcase company that came to Nigeria some over a, over a decade ago and eventually got awarded a contract. Uh, the contract was that, oh, they will build a gas plant the federal government of Nigeria will supply them gas freely. They will use the free gas to, you know, uh, to do whatever they are doing. And then they will share the profits. But you see, this company obtained that contract by corrupting everybody that was corruptible along the pathway. Oh, my God. Bribing anybody bribable. Of course, that contract wasn't going to work anyway. So at some point, they said, oh, the federal government has uh, frustrated the contract by not providing us with the gas that it promised to provide us. Therefore, we are suing them for breach. Hmm. Ask them, where was the plant? You still said you were going to You were going to be. But because they could bribe everybody, before you knew it, wow. they, got, they went to arbitration and there was an arbitral award of about $6.6 billion with an interest at 7%. So before you know it, that 6.6 .6 billion over the years has become 11 billion. They want to send Nigeria. They want to. Literally. <laughs> In fact, I like the way the Nigerian, one of the Nigerian lawyers described it. He said this is uh, avarice or avarice beyond the dreams. The quantum of wealth that could plunk a nation, plunk a nation into insolvency to think of the fact that Nigerians themselves are involved Hmm. In such gargantuan front against their own nation, it's unbelievable. It is. Hmm. It, it is. is. It is sad to think of the the elites that whose name but, have been mentioned but around that. This not what the way we sabotage this nation. Do you understand? Because you see, what you've just described, right, is what happens on a daily basis. That is why somebody else from outside of this country, we have the F country hmm. to come into this country. And do this kinds of fraud. They said it. Because In the case, yes. these people said it. It was as if, is it not Nigeria? Yeah, yeah. Those people are so corrupt. Yes, so corrupt. Yes. Yes. We, can on, we can go and clean yes. them out. Somebody and they came them and they came ball. with a yeah. fat wallet of dollars and yeah. they distributed it around. And they were right yeah. because somebody gave them the contract. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's just a crazy, so, crazy. I mean, this then brings us back to the conversation. Mm. that Because if we, and, and this is why I love where we're heading with this conversation. If we keep the focus on things like diverse, it's not like they are not important. Mm. They are. The diversity, the equity, and the inclusion, they are very important. But what we need now is not about all of those things. It is a, it's somebody that cares enough for mm. every single Nigerian that if you are given a road contract, you will deliver that job like your life Depends on, on it. it. Do you understand? That is it. Yeah. That is so it. if we if we start to ask for those kinds of leaders, mm. then we are ready. Mm. Because if we keep our focus on things like this, we lose 
you know, we lose track, track of the real issues. important issues. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, this this almost I mean, considering this case now, it's way beyond just the leaders. It's the people themselves. I mean, because this would this would have gone through civil, normal civil servants. Correct. Normal, but, not but, leaders. Please. You have civil I mean, servants. Hey. Say, oh, I mean, yes, it's true that they gave me two hundred thousand dollars, but it was because. Um, I had health challenges. Imagine. And the guy said he was going to pay, help me with my health challenges. I mean, help me educate. Uh, <laughs> let's say she has forgotten, but she knows. No. She's pretending not to know. No. Who are, the, who are the major demons that we have? No, in, see. Wait now, in governance structure. Mm. Of course, it's the civil servants. It's the civil servants now. The people. You know, you know last it's year the there, was, there were two civil servants mm. in Abuja. One of them had about 200 and something houses. Mm -hmm. Another about 100 and something houses. How much is the salary? Thank I mean. you. That one is not in any political party. You no, no, no party. It's I'm just telling a, you. These are just I'm summer. telling you. Because they will tell you, even with their mouth, that soldier go, soldier so come. They are, the, yes. they are the ones that are the custodian of some of this corruption yeah, no. that we are talking about. Now they go teach you. What do you, 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 where you just come. Where do you sabi? Exactly. Now they know now. So, Did you see the guys who uh, were uh, uh, protesting against Umar who mm -hmm. locked him out yes. of the office? That is the nature of the kind of civil servants we that have. we have. To say that by nine o'clock you are not in the office, nine thirty you are not in the office, and the minister is saying, "What kind of thing is this? I am already here. Why are you not here?" Yeah. So how and do they we? Said, uh, he, 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 you know. Yeah. How do we clean that system? Ah. Because you see this diversion, inclusion, and whatever. Mm. Me, I go prefer make we start and say civil servant. Mm. Remove all the civil servants where they are. Do state carry the go canoe. First, <laughs> remove state. <laughs> Remove which is no, you should, yes, now they should remove that thing. I'm, I'm being honest though. If honestly. we want to practice this diversion, equitably, yes. I will start it inside. If this Lagos state civil servants now mm. we remove all of them, mm. we carry them go Bono, Bono. <laughs> bring Bono come Kano. Like we just like a like, like, yeah. like yeah. yeah. Tell me how, 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 how would that you know help? They the will system. find a way. The most important because thing is for people to be there loyal is, to no way, this. Nah, there is, there is a structure mm -hmm. around corruption. Mm. That's it now. When they come here, they will set up that system. Set up <laughs> system. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to back I now. absolutely they agree with will. you. They will. You see, it all goes back to leadership. People say followership, followership. Yes, followership has a big. So are you telling me that civil servants don't have any? They don't have any tribe. It means that they are the same everywhere. The same hey, everywhere. Hi, there's it's a problem. The everywhere. I, I had uh, a, a court case. I won't mention the court before they were. <laughs> you know, I had taken one of my previous employers to court. Hmm. When we got to the court, the, the Lawyer said, ah, well, no, you need to come on this particular deal. There are certain things you need to sign and all of that. I said, no, no problem. So I came to the court. About, I arrived at about 9.30. The place where they were meant to attend to me it was an admin part of, of the court. I said, at 9.30, when I came, nobody has come. Hmm. Later, a couple of them came. There was a lady and a, and a guy. The lady that came brought out a big bowl of jollof rice. No. Till I left at about 12. That is what she was busy with. Till I left. Several other desks. I sat midday, 12. Some other desks were still empty. They had not resumed work. They had not resumed. Hmm. And the one that there was, was one there that was almost dying of work. There was one particular one that, well, you know, it seems as if they've known him that that, that is want the... to die here, yeah, Abby. <laughs> Do we give you the work? On the, on the guy. And these are people that will cry and mm. protest and say they want salary increase. Yeah. So this is... I mean, it's taxpayers' money. So if people do not, in their individual space, do not think that it is fundamentally... They are, they are obligated to be loyal to this country. Mm. I mean, we will keep being like this. Yeah, so, people also watch their leaders. Yeah. Don't forget. True. I've seen leaders where, the body like in an office mm. where people used to come late. They just suddenly found out that the boss is at his desk yeah. before 8 o'clock. Mm. That was what Umay was trying to You see, <laughs> ah, then she and Pepe. <laughs> It's only uh, maybe um, fashion and then no, 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 because that's the only thing I was going to say to you that fashion did it so well. He didn't that. care what so, you were going to say so, about so, him. So the Lagos Homes Project, I, mm. I always make reference to this because I was a direct beneficiary mm. and not because I knew anybody. anybody. Mm. Mm. I was just, you know, when fashion started campaigning for pay your tax, pay your tax, I actually saw the vision. I said, ah, this guy makes sense. So 
I'll, you know, on my own, I started paying my taxes. Mm. So even when I was earning income, like a salary, they were not, they were deducting my, listen, but they were you not know, remitting. Remitting. It was the taxes I was paying from my business that, that I, counted that for counted you. for me. So when the Lagos Home Project started, and they were saying that it's only taxpayers. So in fact, he cut off all those ex those bureaucracies and all the things that you know, civil servants go and buy blocks of homes. Yeah, he cut all, all, yes, he mm. cut it off. He said, any first of all, it has to be a first time buyer, you don't have a property in Lagos. Secondly, you must be a taxpayer. Those were the only two conditions. Mm. You don't have any property that they can trace to your name on the Lagos lands, mm. and you must be a taxpayer. I said, Wow, I thought it was a lie. A lot of, if you go, till today, if you go to my estate in Ogba, everybody were first-time homeowners. Mm. Both the scheme one, scheme two, first-time homeowners. That is so it was people that were telling me, yes, sir. It was people that were telling me, ah, like, ah, go and apply. Go so apply. it was a friend of mine that called me and said, go and apply. Oh, this thing. I said, are you sure? In this Lagos, you don't, you don't need to know anybody. Mm. You don't need to carry file to any mm. office. I said, I could not be. Do you know that it was in the comfort of my home? Mm. I sat down on my laptop. I typed, I did everything, filled the form, how much I was earning, everything, my tax ID, every single thing. The next thing, I got a mail that I had qualified, like a pre-qualification. Then they, they, did, a, they did a draw, mm. and I won. Like, wow. It was so, like, literally, yes. even me, the day they were giving me the certification that I won, I was thinking, are you sure? Is that there something that's coming? <laughs> so that's to tell you that mm. it is possible. And this is regardless of who mm. is there. Do you understand? So, if we truly want to change the system, me, I focus on who are these people that are leaders. Because if we still want to start bringing all these, uh, uh, the person has to be for my, there will be problem. Yeah. Yeah. The person has to be a woman, there will be yeah. problem. Because even the women now, we've seen... <laughs> it is not... <laughs> it is not a gender problem we are trying to <laughs> In the real sense. But the truth was we we'll said. To have leadership. Yeah. In that direction, mm. yeah. we will change this country mm. eventually because people will learn to trust the mm. system and trust the leader. Yeah. I knew someone else who was my colleague who won in that fashion scheme. You can imagine. He's from Cross River. In fact, his name, you can't even pronounce it. The variety <laughs> down there. He didn't believe that it was going to happen. Mm. I said, okay, what have you got to lose? Well, yeah, go and put your name now. And he, put, and he won. Mm. He will never forget. That he didn't know anybody in Lagos State and under a housing scheme in one Thank house you. In Lagos. Fair and it's not from Lagos. Wow. So if you tell that kind of a person tomorrow that you want a cross river uh, governor, you will say, why? why? Anybody can go hey, as long as you have my interest. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. Know. So we need to move in that Absolutely. direction. Absolutely. I wish we can. I wish we, we can. Do we have who, more who, who, who <laughs> we teach people they need to move in this direction? <laughs> Belong, <laughs> He's very competent. He will teach you people. Me, I run. <laughs> but thank you so much, sir. It's always yeah. fun having you. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I, we learned a lot today. Absolutely. Even that day, yeah, 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 I don't know. I don't know. They help me break this down. Absolutely. Ah, so Absolutely. we've been safe from bankruptcy. Ah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Safe from bankruptcy. That would have been a disaster. Wow. Mm. Praise God. We thank Why would they see money to pay? We will have borrowed. Now, the guy is asking. Now, you don't know. When it makes president want to say that. Who does wake up one day and they say a private organization owns Nigeria? Thank you so much, Bella. My pleasure. Thank you. Nice to be here. All right, before we go, I'm sure you follow us across. I hope you guys learned as much as we do. We're having so much fun, though. Follow us across all our social media handles at Wish Your Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. You missed our very short quotes for today. Here it is again. Society is unity in diversity. Simple and short. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao. <laughs>